All right, it's time to learn how to do pro mathematical formatting in Groff with EQN. That's what this video is going to be on. Now, many of you guys have been following my series on Groff, which is quite excellent, as it is a quite excellent tool. Um, but Groff comes with a lot of little preprocessors that can work a lot of magic. I did a video on Refer already, which does bibliographies. EQN, or Equin, I don't know how it's actually pronounced is excellent because it does mathematical notation, like stuff like this. So in this video where we are going to learn how to do this kind of stuff, it's very simple. We're gonna learn how to do it in Groff. Um, so here is a Groff document we can start off with. I've already formatted it. You'll see I am using the MS macros, nice and simple. And if we want to, let's say we wanna add some mathematical equations because we need them in our, our document or maybe we just wanna look smart. And so let, how do we go about doing that? Now, I'll go ahead and, I mean, as we've talked about in other videos, there are these preprocessors that you can, that basically hone in on a particular part of a graph document and they perform special operations like, you know, again, finding bibliographies or putting in graphics, or in this case, formatting correct mathematical notation. And so to, do something to, let's say, let's say we want to add a basic equation to our document. It's very simple. Uh, what you do is EQN reads everything that's between the EQ command and the EN command. Everything between this will be interpreted as an equation. So let's say we want the equation X equals three plus five. Now to format this document, there are two main ways which are sort of the same thing. You can run EQN on your document saying that you want to output to PDF and then push or pipe that into Groff and output it into a particular PDF. So you'll see here, now we have our little equation here. So X equals three plus five, very nice. Uh, another way to do it, a little simpler, I guess, is you can actually get rid of the EQN command. And if you just run Groff with the E option, it will automatically uh, I gotta give it the file name. It will automatically format that uh, doc or pre-process it with uh, pre-process it with EQN. Um, so that's what commands you run. I'm gonna be using uh, a compile command in my Vim, uh, so you're not gonna see me run it every time. But just know that that's that's how it works. But anyway, let me show you what EQN can do before you actually end up doing this yourself. Um, so let's talk about basic formatting. Uh, I'm gonna copy this line and uh, paste it in again. Actually, let's let's change it a little. Let's say you know x is greater than three plus or minus five or something like that. And I'm gonna compile that. Now, first thing to notice about EQN is that all of the stuff in the equation block is interpreted is is gonna be formatted on one line by default. So you'll see that even though we made a new line here, it's not actually going to acknowledge that new line. In fact, EQN does all of its new lining and all of its spacing by default. Uh, whether or not, so I could, for example, get rid of these spaces or something like that. And that's actually not gonna make a difference in the output. Um, now, if you want something, now there's a reason for this. And the reason for this we'll talk about a little later. It basically amounts to when you have really big equations, it's, the, it's nice to be able to put things on multiple lines. But if you want, you know, multiple equations, you have to put them in different equation blocks. Now I'll talk about doing in-text math and stuff like that at the end of the video, but we gotta do the basic stuff first. So, so here we have our two equations. So note for the second one, I have this greater than or equal to sign, or you know, literally just the, the open bracket and the angle bracket, whatever people call them, I don't know. They're like different country to country. And the equal sign, that is automatically formatted to the greater than or equal to sign or plus and minus, you put them together, they make the plus and minus sign. Ni very, very nice, very expectable. Or, you know, you can have, uh, you know, exclamation point for uh, not equals, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, pretty much the kind of stuff you'd expect. So let's, uh, let's do something a little more. Uh, so for example, superscripts. So let's say we want to the, the equation or not equation, let's say we want the discriminant or whatever, you know, in like the quadratic formula. Uh, so that is b squared minus 4ac. All right, compile that. Now you'll see what I did here to get a superscript. What you do is you say soup, and then the next thing is going to be the thing that's gonna be in the superscript. Now let's say hypothetically, you'll see that 
2 is the only thing that is uh, superscripted. Let's say hypothetically we wanted to superscript 2 minus 4ac. Now there are two ways to do it. One is we could just physically put them all as one big thing. That's a possibility, uh, although you can't always do that. We'll talk about sometimes you need spacing in different places. Um, but the more robust way of doing it is actually treating it as one big thing with uh, brackets. Maybe these are angle brackets, you know, the, the terms are just so annoying, but these kind of brackets, right? Um, so you'll see that now these are all treated as one big thing. If we delete the brackets, you'll see that they go away. Or, well, two is going to be the thing that is superscripted. You might also be able to guess uh, the opposite of soup is sub for subscripts. So we can have nice little subscripts here. Uh, but I'll keep this as the uh, discriminant because I think we'll use this later. We'll, we'll do something special with it later on. So basic equations. Uh, other things, I pulled up. I pulled up a couple tabs here. Let's say we want to format the equation for the golden ratio. So phi equals one plus the square root of five over two. That's, that's what we want to print out. Okay, so how are we going to do this? It's actually super easy. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. You don't worry when you watch my videos, right? Because everything's nice and easy. So phi, first off, uh, to format any kind of Greek letters, be they pi or phi or anything else, you can just write their name out. So this is going to appear. I'll go ahead and compile this. It's going to appear just as phi. So phi is equal to, uh, well, I'll write it the wrong way first. So again, uh, one plus the square root of five over two. This is, I'm writing it the wrong way. Squirt five uh, over two. I'm gonna compile this. Now over is a command that takes one argument before it that's gonna be the numerator and one argument after it that's gonna be den the denominator. Now you'll see by default, we want one to be part of this numerator. Um, but it's only looking at the last element, which is this square root of five. This is treated as one element since it's square, squirt running on five. Um, in order to get what we want, we are going to have to use nice little brackets here, angly brackets, whatever you want to call them. Format that. And now we got what we want. Phi equals one plus square root of five over two. Very nice. That's what we, uh, that's what we need. So you got to be careful with your angle, angle brackets. Sometimes you need them. Uh, you, you'll, I mean, it's just like plugging stuff into a calculator or some, I mean, you, you guys, you kids in school still use like uh, TI-48, whatever they are, those Texas Instruments stuff. I'm sort of curious if, if you still use that. Who is calling me? Kids, this is why you don't go to college, because once you graduate from college, every school you get a degree from is just going to call you every week and ask you for money. Don't drop out of college. Anyway. What was I talking about? Okay, yeah, so let's do let's do some more formatting. So we have uh, phi, that's very nice. We know how to do Greek letters. We know how to do square root. We know how to do over. Let's do something a little more complicated. I pulled up the tab for standard deviation. Um, and uh, yeah, this thing right here. So here is our sample standard deviation. And let's, let's try and format this. This is a little more complicated. In fact, I'm gonna move it over here so we can see what we're working on. So I don't embarrassingly forget what I'm doing in the middle of it. So, uh, you know, it's just the sum of squares over, you know, in, plus, in minus one or whatever. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. Now there are a couple scary things in here. First, everything's in a square root. And there's also a summation notation, and there's this bar over the x, but it's all actually really easy. So for this, we're going to want to probably use multiple lines. As I mentioned before, you're free to pretty much add, uh, you know, add some extra new lines if you want, and they're not going to show up in the finished project. So first, I'm going to do squirt, and there's going to be square root that's going to be over the entire thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and close that at the end. And I'll do the numerator. So the numerator is also, oh, well, I'll put the brackets in for the numerator later. Well, let's do the summation notation first because that's the scariest looking thing. I mean, if you want to look smart, just use a bunch of summation notation. Now how to do that is actually pretty much how you would describe it in English. So this is the sum uh, from I equals one to capital N. So how you do this in graph is literally just sum from I equals one to capital N. And I'll go ahead and compile this just to show you that it works. Here it is. 
uh, I equals one, capital N. Obviously, Groff is formatting it above and below while Wikipedia has this on, you know, saving space with the, you know, on the same sort of line. Uh, but it's the same thing. Uh, and obviously, if you have something bigger, like to n plus five or something like that, if you want that to be one element, you of course need some angle brackets in here, just hypothetically, if you needed that. Uh, so just be aware. Um, but so anyway, so we have the summation notation, and then we're gonna need the, uh, well, it's the sum of squares, so we're gonna have x subscript y, subscript i, excuse me, then x bar, and then uh, sup close the parenthesis, uh, superscript two, and you format that, and you'll see, oops, I messed that up. <laughs> uh, there are so, so some of the keywords like soup and bar and stuff like that. You should have spaces or new lines or on either side here. I forgot to uh, add a space between the parentheses, but uh, so if you add the space in here, you will see that there is a nice little bar. Uh, so that the numerator looks very good, and the denominator, uh, let's say. Well, we got to put the numerator in brackets because we want it to be all one big ele element. And that is going to be over n minus one. Again, the syntax is just the same that we had uh, further up, uh, except for, uh, you know, well, so over, I mean, wh wh where's our phi? Yeah, here it is. So it's the same thing as our phi equation where the first argument over is before and the next one is after. I'm just putting them on mo multiple lines for ease. So uh, here, here we go, and that's pretty much. Why did I say x? Should be s for standard deviation. Silly, silly me. But there is our standard deviation equation. Nice sample standard deviation equation. Actually, very different in statistics. But so that's it. A pretty complicated equation. Uh, pretty easy to do as well. Uh, another thing we can do. I pulled up the little tab for pi here. Uh, here we have an integral, and that can be done pretty much in the same way you do sums. So let's do this little pi equation here, just as an example. So eq, uh, again, pi is a Greek letter, you can just write it out. Pi equals the integral from negative 1 to 1, exactly the same as summation notation here. And then we have dx over uh, squirt. Why do I always say squirt? It just sounds right. It sounds it sounds like a good way to say it. Now I'm going to compile this. And so notice a couple things. Notice I didn't, we have over here, but I didn't put things in brackets uh, because squirt, squirt is gonna treat, every, since all of this stuff is already in squirt, this is gonna be treated as just one uh, entity here. Uh, whereas dx is just one entity as well. So since we only have one thing, we don't need brackets unifying everything. But uh, anyway, Here's what we're looking for. Pi equals integral, yada, yada, yada. Um, I, I never learned this in school. I had to look it up, but uh, whatever. So there it is. Um, so aside from that, speaking of things I, we did learn in school, um, I want to show off there's another very useful thing you can do where you can, let's say there, you're going to be writing some particular equation over and over and over again, or part of an equation. So here we had the discriminant up here. So the discriminant is part of the quadratic formula. Um, but let's say you know we're writing a paper and we have to write it a million or the discriminant out. We have to write it out a million times, and we're just too lazy. We don't want to do that. One nice thing you can do is you can actually, I, I guess, define macros or define variables, um, and you can contain some mathematical stuff in it. So let's go up here, and instead of just printing this stuff out, let's say define. Uh, disk for discriminant and then what you want that uh, want so this is the variable name and all the stuff you want to define it as is going to be between ticks between grav accents I'm gonna output this you'll see that it disappears that's because we're now no longer outputting something we're just defining something but now that we've done this every time we type in disk for discriminant uh, let's make a new little code block here maybe I should zoom up for you guys Every time we write out disk, it's going to print. Oops, it's going to print out the discriminant, the thing that we've defined it as. So now, let's say we want to write out the entire quadratic formula, which I hope I remember because I didn't pull it up. If I forget, I'm sorry, Miss Axman, that I forgot my quadratic formula. So I think it's um, x is equal to minus b uh, plus or minus the square root of the discriminant 
take our discriminant, put it in that. And then all of this stuff is gonna be in brackets. I'm gonna put these, notice I'm just putting them on different lines, but same kind of stuff. All of that is, is going to be over 2a. I think that, let me see if it looks right. Does that look right? Yeah, I think that's it. I think I got it right. Maybe I should look it up. But someone can complain in the comments if I got it wrong. So there's our quadratic formula. And notice a couple things about, I mean, we have all the typical stuff, the plus or minus, squirt, we have the over, but we're also using the variable we just defined, disk. Or another thing we could do, I mean, let's say uh, we wanted to find, we have to write the quadratic formula out a million times. Let's actually put this all on one line. Uh, we can define quad as all of this. So now we've defined uh, the quadratic formula. So whenever we say quad, uh, let's type that out. So quad, actually let's, let's have quad quads. One, two, three, four. Print that out and look at that. We have lots of quadratic formulas. God, I hope I got this right. Miss Axman would be so mad if I got this wrong. There, there's some song that like you can recite to remember the quadratic formula, but I don't really remember the tune of it. But anyway, so that that's how to do variables. Now there's one other thing. Now I'll go ahead and say, look in the video description. I'm gonna put a link to some EQN documentation. I'm obviously not going over everything you can do in it. There's a whole lot of other stuff that you'll be interested in, but I think most of the basics I, I have here. But there's one other thing I wanna talk about in the video, and that is using inline code. Because how we've been using it so far is we've just you know had paragraphs of text, and then we have equations in the middle of nowhere. But sometimes you wanna put equations in a paragraph. So let's say we have, hypothetically, a paragraph here. So this is a paragraph, uh, here is another sentence, uh, always forgetting to press escape. Um, so here, oops, here's our new paragraph here. Let's say we want to put some code in this paragraph. Now by default, EQN doesn't have a way of re, EQN is only looking for EQ and EN. That's all it's looking for. It's not looking for anything else. But you can do in any of these code blocks, you can say, mm, you could set a delimiter. And I'm gonna set my delimiter to, uh, mm, excuse me, the dollar sign. Now what this means is uh, EQ, EQN is going to search any paragraph text or anything else for dollar signs or things that terminate with a dollar sign and end with a dollar sign. And it is going to interpret that as code that it should in, you know, uh, print out as being mathematical. So what we can do in this paragraph, we can say, here is an equation. Uh, so, you know, something like, uh, put it in a uh, dollar sign, so x equals 5 superscript 10, or something like that. Um, and if we output that, you will see that, oh, look at that. Now we have superscripts in our main text. These dollar signs don't appear. Uh, it's all formatted, you know, we, we could even have summation notation. I mean, let's replace the X with sum from, I don't know, one to 10. Doesn't really make any sense. Uh, it's not, not a very true, uh, this is not a true statement, but whatever you see, we have our summation notation and all that stuff. It formats all this stuff in line and we can still have, you know, here is more text, something like that, okay? Uh, no problem. Um, now, one pro well, one potential problem is since we've defined these dollar signs as being the delimiters, uh, Groff might get a little confused if we use, you know, you know let's say I bought this for a dollar, or that's not what I meant to say, for ten dollars or something like that. If we run that, you'll see that it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. It's it, it, it doesn't compile properly. And the reason that is, is because it's found this dollar sign here and it's interpreting that as EQN stuff and it's looking for the next dollar sign. So what you actually have to do is explicitly say, okay, our delimiter, forget about that. Uh, turn that thing off. So we'll turn off our delimiter there. And here we go. I bought this for $10. So that that's one kind of downside. I think, I wonder if you can do this in text. I wonder if I can say, I'm not actually sure of this. I'm trying this real time. So what if I say delim off in here? Does that work? I'm just curious. Oh, I guess it does work. So you could even include it in the, if you don't want to have to space another paragraph, you can inter include it in the in text or in paragraph formatting. But anyway, so I think, uh, I think this has been a good enough introduction. I hope you have some ideas for the kind of stuff you can do with it. I mean, look at all these 
smart looking equations that we can make just with this video of 10 minutes or however long it's been. I feel like it's been more than 10 minutes, but anyway, so this is EQN. As I said, check the video description. I'll have some links to uh, more extensive manuals that have more of the stuff than is just in the, if you type in man EQN. Um, but yeah, again, this is a lot of fun. It's another preprocessor for Groff. I might do other Groff preprocessors in the future. I think uh, we're about at the, the point where I'm getting emails from people saying, oh great, now I'm doing this and this and this with Groff. There's so many things I can do. So that's the point. Glad you guys are looking at new content and stuff, but uh, hopefully this will inspire you to look into mathematical formatting in Groff. I actually prefer it to LaTeX by, not by that much, but you know, LaTeX, there, there, there are a lot of problems with LaTeX, you know, but uh, that's for another video. But anyway, see you guys next time and I hope you learned something.